We have a special group for when, like, we get we get to take books home to books that we choose. We have special groups for that. My group is the hardest group, I think. But we do harder work than the other stuff. I help my friend, like, when they get stuck on a word. In Bangabandhu Primary School in Bethnal Green, there is a wide range of pupils with special needs. In Shahnaz Khan's class, five children have speech and language difficulties, two have hearing impairments, three have behaviour issues, and two more children have statements of educational need. Good morning, Year 2 Blue. Good morning. Shahnaz believes in working in an inclusive classroom with activities differentiated appropriately. Her Key Stage 1 class is using the book Not Now, Bernard to recognise speech in text. Prior to the lesson, we made puppets, so the kids had to make their own version of the characters, and we did a lot of descriptive um, work then as well, using adjectives, how they would describe the characters, and use those facial expressions for their puppets, which would later help them in the next lesson to understand speech in a story. Who can describe one of those characters for me? Sadia. Big and hairy. He's big and hairy, that's right, well done. We try and motivate the children by making the things that we teach relate to their real life experiences as much as possible. Some of our children, second language children, got very limited experience of the world outside and so we have to make things as concrete and as visual as possible. What part of this sentence is speech? Anissa. The main aim is always the mixability. In that case, the children have good role models who they can communicate with and socially, I think it's very healthy because all the children are mixing with one another and also making the more able children aware of the children's needs and what you have to do to be a good listener and to take turns and to share ideas. We take turns because if we don't take turns, that's not going to be fair and if we take turns, it's going to be fair. What have we been learning about lit in literacy? Niaz. We are talking about a uh, not now, Bernard. Fantastic, that's right. One of the children, Niaz, he has got um, significant severe language delay. Um, so he um, finds it very difficult to communicate. It's only recently that he's begun to um, use um, more than two or three words to communicate. Setting you up, Niaz. Oh my goodness. His understanding is more limited than his spoken language because he finds comprehension and the processing very, very difficult. For Niaz, um, we got him to make a puppet um, related to Not Now Bernard and then um, for him to practice with other peers from his um, table and practice them what he would say, what the characters would say. Can you say that to the monster? It's an interesting book, Not Now Bernard, and all the kids enjoy the book. Um, they love the characters in that. So this lesson gave them the opportunity to make up what they would, what, if they were the characters, what they would say. It's a really good book. It's got some really good drawings and it's really creative, creative the writer and the illustrator. Through hands-on activities, I feel that they will gain more for themselves and be able to go on with the lesson with understanding and having that practical experience. I take into consideration that it's going to be quite kinesthetic and visual for them. Um, so lots of colourful maybe pictures and um, things that they can do themselves. Who are you, Niaz? Um, Bernard. Bernard, OK. Hi, Mum. Hello, Mum. Not now, Bernard. Children at that age, um, it's very difficult for them to understand speech in a text. So this um, oral rehearsal will enhance a deep understanding in their head of what would sp what speech is. Hello, Buster. It's very good for Niaz because he has poor motor control and that helps him. Extending it with gesture and with encouragement and motivation, praising him as well because he does like praise and he responds well to praise. Let's give them a round of applause because they worked really hard on that. We do try at the beginning of the year to speak with all the teachers about the needs of their children in their classes because after all even experienced teachers are going to be taking on new children with needs they may not have experienced before. And after about half a term then we're able to move into writing IPs, provision maps 
to address the needs of the children. What's Bernard saying to Mummy? Look. There's a monster in the garden and it's going to eat me up. Any differentiation is most effective um, with the weekly planning sessions. And so um, myself and my colleague, we go into your group's planning meetings to help them to differentiate the work, to direct questioning, to think about the needs of the whole range of the class um, in their planning meetings. And that is very supportive, especially to the newly qualified teachers. What could Bernard say here? One of the things we've done in this school is looked at the curriculum web planning. And um, because we have children operating from level P2 right through to P5, we try and um, think of ways in which we can reach all the children. Um, so lots of topics, we're looking at real objects. So the teacher, rather than just um, saying, today this is the learning intention, this is what we're going to do, may show um, a real object for a child and then encourage questioning about that object to draw them in. Bye. 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 OK, we're not fighting. The teacher needs to have a range of questions, from high-level questions, for the more able children, to very, very simple, basic questions, so that the child who has greater difficulty understanding can participate and be part of the class group. What happens to Bernard in the story? Is he gone? Another possibility is to have talking partners, and that gives an opportunity for the children to rehearse what they um, want to say before they have to say it publicly in front of the class. Think about what they would say to each other in this picture. Just turn and talk to the person next to, next to you in your talking partners. What could we write in those speech bubbles? Off you go. You two will speak. You two we do share ideas to give each other, each other more understanding. You see the speech bubble? What's he saying, Nias? I think the most essential thing that we try and aim for is that the teachers consider very carefully when planning an activity how the children should be grouped. And the far table near the sink, I'd like Jacob, Lasarina, Mafuza, Naima and Tanjid. All I knew it was just we were doing a special um, thing that 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 table only. Um, we we're doing a special thing. I normally sit on that table for stuff, and sometimes I sit on um, other tables. In today's lesson, the more able group, we're using uh, thinking bubbles and thinking beyond the remit of um, just the standard text that was presented, not now Bernard. The less able children, they had the teaching assistant working alongside them. What are we going to do? We are writing in the story. In the and for those children, that was a useful grouping to aid their understanding. What are these called? Speech bubbles. And what are we going to write in speech bubbles? We write it. When somebody is saying something. When somebody's saying something, Carl Samuel. Sometimes I help Niaz and Shaquille because they 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 don't they they don't know. So like if they did this book all on their own and they might get it wrong and I try, I know I help them out with that. In you when we were making um, animals and Shishma couldn't couldn't quite make them, then I just helped her and then I helped the little Jamil and year one with the same thing. Sometimes I help people with maths work, sometimes you could get stuck um, and then um, you can ask the person next to you to help you. Sometimes my friend helps me if, when I'm stuck and and then I help them. So really it depends very much on what activities are planned and um, the resources that are needed. But the main aim is to be very flexible and move children as often as possible. I think it's very important for um, the teacher to get to know the children individually. It's very easy to um, fall into the role where the teaching assistant works with that particular group every day whilst the teacher works with the rest of the children. But we really try and promote that the teaching assistants swap roles sometimes and that the teacher really gets to know the children on an individual basis. Ability groups can be a concern if they're overused. I've seen where children sit on the same chair at the same table every day, day in and day out. And um, given that rigid seating arrangements, 
the children don't get an opportunity to perhaps ever talk to somebody who is just across the classroom. And so they're getting very little opportunity to have role models who can help them to develop their ideas or to see where they're going. So socially, I think it's absolutely essential that there is some mix of all the groups, gender, races, etc., across the classroom, and that children work cooperatively together. Who can explain what we've just been doing? Sorry. We've been filling all, all the speech bubbles in the book. By questioning the children, it gives me a good sense of understanding of how much they've understood out of the lesson and what they've achieved at the end of the lesson. In the book, I was doing what Dad was helping me read in the picture. So I wrote, hello, Dad, not now, Bernard. Dad said, ah, ah. Then Bernard went away. Has anyone spotted anything here? You don't need to use the word said because it shows um, that Dad's saying ah, ah, because the speech bubble's there. That is fantastic explanation, Lassie. Now come and get a sticker, good girl. Well done. Which bit do we need to take out from this speech bubble? Said. Dad. On that. Dad said, that's right. We had speech bubbles and we had thought bubbles. So when, like, when Bernard, you, you could say hi, Mum, and then um, his mum could say, go obey Bernard in her thought bubble. I get a general feedback from all the different ability groups by picking out two children from each ability group for them to feed back on what they've done, asking children to explain what they've done and understood from the lesson as well. My book, I used lots of adjectives and... Yeah, do you want to read that? That's lovely. I can see what you've written there. This one, the speech bubble. Hello, Mum. There's a big purple hairy monster in the garden. At the end of the lesson, we'd ask Niaz, um, where in this p picture, where in this scene, is the character saying something? So for Niaz to be able to say, read that out, that would have indicated to us that he's understood what the speech is in the text. We're going to have one more person, Niaz. At first he struggled with the letters on the keyboard, but over time he got to recognise where the key um, letters are and he became, his confidence grew in using the Alpha Smart. Not now, Bernard, Dad. Ah, ah. Good Dad. Nia's used his Alpha Smart, and what we're going to do, we're going to cut, uh, print that off and then stick it into his book. I learnt about Not Now Bernard, and I had a book, and, I, and there were some pictures of Bernard and the Bernard's mum and Bernard's dad, and then speech bubbles were coming out of their mouth. And then we had to write down what we think they're saying. Stories sometimes have speech bubbles and sometimes they have speech marks. And some stories don't. When the children feel confident with what they've learnt, they're proud of it and they're enthusiastic. And that shows me that they've understood and they've achieved something.